Today, we are going to learn how to create a stencil design for a light painting stencil project. Okay, so with the light painting project, you are going to be using light writers and pen tools to light our stencil designs. And we're going to have a special box that you're going to place your stencils on and then you are going to light them from one side while the camera photographs it from the other side. Okay, so I'll be demonstrating that later on. But first to start off, I want to go over our criteria to create these stencil projects. So, say, so first you need to create the stencil before you can do the light painting. Now our project is going to be based on Banksy. We're going to, and also cultural designs. So we're going to create two designs, and I'm going to show you an example of that. So Banksy, we know, uses satire, he uses societal issues uh, to create very thought-provoking images that really make you think. Here's an example of a Banksy project that was created last year. We can see here that there are quite a few layers to create this image. So there are three major parts to this image. First is these kind of like light coming off the dove, representing energy or peace. We have a dove here in the corner with a very interesting kind of pattern placed on the surface of the dove, and we have hands releasing the dove. So you can see here that all of these layers were created and they're labeled, okay, so that we know what each one is doing. When this was printed, it was printed with three different printouts, okay? Because the hand, as we can see here, as it was painted, was light painted in blue. The bird was light painted in various value tones of green. And the, the energy lines were painted in yellow and in orange. Okay, so when, um, we see these three layers once they're painted and they're combined, this is what the final results, this is what they look like. And we can see here, right over here on the right side, the actual layer, layers that were used to create this image. The second project that we're going to be creating is a cultural design. And this cultural design is going to use um, various culture designs that you feel inspired by. So it could be from your own culture or it can be from a different culture. And in this example, we see a day of the dead skeleton and we see that it was created with the skeleton in the middle and then some cultural designs along the edges. A total of two different layers were created um, to create this entire design and when it was printed, we see that there were two images that were printed, a skeleton and then the corner designs. And then the final results look like this, okay? So here is the final image on the left over here. Okay, right here is the final image. And we see here that um, two raw images were processed. So we have a raw image processed for the center skeleton design, and then we have another raw image that was processed for the border, four corner border design. They were combined in Photoshop, and then he went in and used an eraser tool to remove some of the parts so that the two sections, the, the skeleton and then the border design, were then um, placed together in a very eye-pleasing way. They were very well balanced in regards to color and um, in the general layout. Okay, so we can see here that the center part was removed. He even used a little bit of a clone tool to kind of fix a little bit on the edges. And you can see that these two parts are now very nicely balanced with each other. Okay, so this is one way to edit. This is another way to edit here, where we can see that he used uh, two raw process image, one process image for the bird, and the, 
the, the, the light, and then another raw process image for the hand, and we can see that a layer mask here was used to combine the two of them. So these are really good, strong examples. But how do we create our stencil, okay? So I'm gonna be showing you three different methods to create a stencil, all right? So the first method is using um, what's called brushes um, or finding stencil designs in Google images that you can use. Um, so in a previous tutorial, I showed you how to create brushes, uh, how to download brushes and use brushes. So you might want to review that particular tutorial, okay? But the best place to find brushes is brusheasy.com or deviantart.com. So here are two websites um, that you can go to to look for brushes, okay? So let's go to our Photoshop here. This is an actual project that I'm going to be showing you in a little bit. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to open up a stencil. So we're going to go to File, Open, and we're going to go into our P drive. We're going to go to Photo Demo Examples. We are going to go to Light Paint Stencil Folder, and we're going to click on our Light Paint Stencil Base. Okay, so we're going to open that up. You will note that it has like these blue guidelines, okay? So your designs cannot go beyond these blue guidelines, okay? So the first image I'm gonna show you is how to create um, a stencil using brushes or stamping tools. So what I first did was I researched um, a background image that I wanna use, which is this fence image, okay? So I went into Google Images and I searched up a fence stencil, I uh, want to make sure that I'm using a really good quality image, so I'm going to look at the pixels. If this is like a thousand by a thousand, that's a pretty good size image. So then I save this image in my light painting stencil folder in my uh, documents. So I went to documents, then I went to my digital photo one, and then I went to my light pencil, light painting stencil folder that I had created in there, and that's where I saved all my resource images, okay? So you wanna make sure you do that. So you save it in there. So I'm, I went ahead and I went ahead and just pre-opened it for our videos to make this just a little bit easier to work on. Okay, so here's our, our uh, background image that we're going to use. I'm gonna do Control uh, A, which will select it, Control C, which will copy it, or I can go to edit, um, or I can go to image, or, or I'm sorry, edit, I can go to edit copy, and then, well first I have to go to select all, so control A, okay, or select all, and then go to edit copy, but I find it much easier to just use my keyboards and go to control A, and then control C, now I'm going to come over here to my light painting stencil base and I'm going to go control V or I could go, you know, paste, but control V is a lot faster. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to stretch this out and make sure it fits in this little space here between my blue lines, okay? Now I want to place in this image a butterfly. It's, it's almost like this butterfly is caged and is escaping. And so this is one of my Bangsky images that I'm creating here to kind of create a message um, about freedom. And we often see the butterfly as a, an, a creature that goes through a metamorphosis uh, from a caterpillar to a butterfly. And so the idea is this butterfly is uh, escaping and it has freedom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, I'm going to set this and um, place that in. And then I'm going to put a layer mask over that. And what I want to do is I want to remove some of the fence, okay? So I'm going to come in with my brush, a little brush tool here, make sure I have black over white. And I'm going to come up here and make sure I have a nice soft brush. I'm going to adjust my brush size, maybe a little bigger. Let's see. Oh, that's even bigger. Too big. Um, maybe about there, about 1,842. 
and I'm going to start to remove some of this fence. But I don't want to do it at a 100% opacity. So I'm going to bring this down to about 50% and I'm going to start to remove some of this fence so that we see a little black circle on my layer mask because so, I added a layer mask to that, a little black circle, and we see that the fence is starting to disappear. All right, so this is one layer that I'm going to be painting. Now I'm going to add a new layer, okay? So whenever we add a new object, we must come down here and click on our create new layer, okay? And I'm going to call this butterfly. And the first layer I'm going to call fence. Okay, so now I have a blank layer and I'm going to come up to my brushes. Now earlier on I downloaded my, uh, my butterfly stamps, okay? So now I'm all ready to actually experiment with my butterfly. So here we go, I'm going to grab a butterfly and I want my butterfly to be black. So let's make sure my butterfly is set to black. Um, actually white, I'm going to put this, I want my butterfly to be white, not black. Because anything that is white is represents where the color is going to be painted. And anything that's black represents what is going to remain black, okay? So we can see here that the fence is going to be painted. It's going to show up. And with my butterfly being white, then I know that my butterfly is going to show up as well. So I'm going to control the size of my butterfly a little bit. I'm going to increase my by butterfly size a little bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that in at 100% opacity. Okay, I'm gonna stamp that in at 100% opacity. There we go, there's my butterfly. All right, so if we come back to our document originally that I was using to help us, we can see here is the project that I just made. Okay, so here is the fence design, here is the butterfly design, and this is what it looks like when they're combined, and then this is what it's gonna look like when it's painted right here. So let's come back to um, my design here. And when I go to print this stencil out, I'm going to be using, I'm going to be printing two layers. I'm going to print this as my first layer. And I'm going to paint my fence. And then I'm going to print out the butterfly by itself. And then I'm going to paint just the butterfly so that when I have my um, combined image in Photoshop, it's going to look something like this where I'm gonna have a yellow fence with a pink butterfly, and it's all gonna be done in one exposure. So I'll have layer one painted in pink, I'll have layer two painted in gold, and then when it's, um, once we are done with the exposure, it's going to look like this yellow fence with pink butterfly. All right, so that is, Example A, how we can use a brush. The second example that we're going to be using is taking images and then converting them, um, maybe adding in a black and white layer to make the image black and white because we always want to be working with black and white images and also maybe adding in a contrast layer to give it a little more contrast. And the example that I'm going to be using for that is, let's see, let's close this out because I don't need this one anymore. I'm just Actually, I'm just going to get rid of these because I don't need these anymore. Um, is I'm going to be showing you um, using cultural designs because, you know, you're going to be doing two different designs. One is Banksy theme and one is cultural design. So on the internet, I found this image of this cool kind of stone Celtic design. So what I want to do is I'm going to use my little marquee tool, my rectangle marquee tool to select an area that I want to copy. And so I've selected that. Now I'm going to go to edit copy and then I'm going to come back to my stencil and I'm going to paste that in, edit paste, and I'm going to need to rotate it. Okay. And then I'm going to use my move tool to put it in place and I'm not going to go through all of the steps with this project but I'm gonna, I am going to show you like the final results of what this looks like uh, and so we'll come over here to our Celtic heart 
And here is the final result of what it's going to look like. So if I turn off all these layers, we start off with um, the background, right? Now you'll notice that there's a black layer mask on this. Well, I had to add in a black layer mask because what I want to do is I want to create a Celtic uh, Claudel ring design over the stone wall, okay? So what I did to create this design is I went in and I selected different parts of the, of the Celtic Clada ring. I selected, what's sorry, the crown. I selected the crown and then I pasted it in. So what I did was I, I found a really cool Celtic Clada ring. Here we go. And then what I did was I just went in and I used this quick selection tool the little quick selection tool to select the crown. Okay, so I went in and let's deselect this really quick. Deselect. So just only the crown. I went in, I just selected just the crown, and I went to refine edge and made sure that I had a good selection of my crown. Um, let's see here. So I just selected the crown, went to refine edge, and, and we can see here that I've got a great selection of just the crown, okay? So then I went to edit, copy, and then I went back to my original image, and let's go back to the Celtic heart image, here we go. And I just pasted it in. Okay, so that's going to be one layer that I'm going to be painting with um, a separate color. Okay, and I did the same thing for every layer. So I did that for the hands, I did that for the crown, and then for the spiral and the heart, um, I had to create two layers for that. But I'm going to only print out the spiral and the heart as one layer that I'm going to be printing out for the painting part, okay? So once I had my entire shape, then it let me, it, it defined the area that needs to go black behind my background, okay? Because you'll notice here, if I turn off all these layers, that this is black. Because when I go to paint this, I want only this background here to come up with some various value tones of color, okay? So I only want this background to have some various value tones of color. Um, but I had to black out all of this because if I were, if I didn't do that, then what would happen is these layers here would show the background, the, the stone Celtic knot background would show up where these hands were. And I don't want that. I want to have I want to have just this Celtic stone background be only in the areas where you see the value tones. And then this black area represents where the clotta ring is gonna go, and I want that to have its own pure colors, okay? So that's why I used a layer mask to black out the clotta ring area on the stone Celtic background, okay? Because now I'm gonna print this layer, and then I'm gonna paint this background. I'm gonna print this and this as one layer, and I'm just gonna color in the heart red. And then I'm gonna print the crown by itself, and I'm gonna color that in with like a golden orange and yellow. And then I'm just gonna print the hands by itself, and I'm gonna paint that in blue to represent loyalty. And then the background, I'll be painting that as well, and I was probably going to do that in a green color. So that each layer e ends up being its own color. And that's how we get this particular design as a whole. We can see how each part will be different once it's painted, okay? So that's the second method. The third method is to take a photograph and convert it using the pop art technique, okay? So let's go back to our light painting stencil background. And let's open up a cart that I'm using. I did this, this one image in the past where I used uh, a shopping cart and I used a rainbow motif. 
So let's go to the cart. There we go. Yes. Okay. So this is the shopping cart. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to convert that into a pop art image. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. And I'm going to come over here to image adjustments, invert. And I'm going to go to filter blur. And we're going to put that on Gaussian blur seven. Okay. Type in seven. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here to color dodge. And then I'm going to add in my threshold layer, which is going to make that into the black and white pop art. Okay, so that's how we do that. Now, I'm just going to come over here and show you what I did with this image. I went in and I colored black all around the shopping cart because the only thing I want to use is this shopping cart image. Okay, so I colored in black all around the shopping cart just using a paintbrush tool you know just using a round soft paintbrush tool i just went in and colored all around the shopping cart okay just around the shopping cart all right so then i um, created a stencil and let's go to the stencil design so this is the entire stencil it's pretty elaborate if we turn on the cop uh, shopping cart there it is right there Okay, and I, instead of um, na naming these um, what they were, I decided to name them the colors that I was going to paint them. So this one is called gold. And you can see here that I selected quite a few, I created quite a few different layers here. And I'm just going through and showing you all the layers, just turning them off, because each part of the rainbow is a different color. So my shopping cart is gold, then I have a red rainbow streak, then I have an orange rainbow streak, then I have a yellow rainbow streak, then I have a green rainbow streak, then a blue one, then a purple one, then a dark cloud up in the corner, and another medium cloud in the middle, and then a light cloud just very tiny in the middle here. And when this was done and it was all painted, this is what it looks like. Where is it? Here it goes. All right. So here's the final image. And you can see how the shopping cart is gold. We've got the red, the orange, the yellow, the green, the purple, and the blue star. Um, I mean the blue uh, cloud here. Okay. So you can see how it all worked together to create the final image. But you can see in, in the process of creating this stencil that I had a lot of different layers and I had to use layer masks to block different areas out um, so that I could, you know, pr print, I could then print this by itself and just paint these two little white areas. And then I printed this one out and I just printed just painted in this little cloud here. And then I printed out this layer and I just painted in this cloud area here. And then I painted this rainbow. Um, then I printed this rainbow area, which was uh, purple. And, and then I did this one, which was uh, blue. And then this one was green. And then this one was yellow. And then this one was orange. And then this one was red. So finally, I had just my cart. So all those areas I printed out separately. OK? So your you know, stencil doesn't have to have nearly as many layers as, as mine. OK, this one was a very elaborate example. OK? You could have anywhere from two to three layers. And that's what I recommend you do. Keep it a little more simple. Um, Things to not do, I will definitely get into that in a moment. But here's an example of C, where I took a photograph that I converted into a pop art. And I only used this one here and this one on the right. These were the, so this one was only two. And when I went to paint this, you could see the final example here. Um, this one in the middle ended up being the the very light blue skin tone it ended up being the dark blue flowers up here and some of the dark hair parts. And then on this one, which is on the right, 
It ended up being some of the pink flower designs that you see in the hair and also the darker blue tones that you see that make up her facial features, okay? So that one was a much more simple design and all it was was an inverted image of itself. And um, so that's a, a much more simple way to use the pop art technique and create an interesting stencil design. Okay, do not do. You need to definitely listen to these tips. Do not leave lots of area of white space. Okay, so this one was done last year and look at the final results, not very good, okay? Um, also, do not combine all images on one layer, okay? If you do that, then you can't divide it up and you end up having to paint the whole thing and trying to figure out where you're gonna put your different colors can be very confusing, okay? Also, do not leave lots of black area. You can see in these two examples, it's pretty boring if you only have black with a very little bit of white or a little bit of color. All these images have no variety of value tones. You wanna have lots of variety of value tone because it's a lot more interesting. And also make sure that your image is really clear and you can make out your design. Like this person created this nature scene, which was, I'm like, what is that? I can't even make out the details. And then when they went to paint it, it even got more confusing. So make sure that your design is easy to make out and you can easily see what your designs are. Obviously, these first two designs are very strong and very good examples. We've got a nice even balance of black with designs and the same thing on this image here. 